Hey y'all, welcome back to another What's For Dinner. Tonight I've got five quick and easy meals for you. This is kind of a mix of just some regular meals. I've got an air fryer meal, I've got a couple of crock pot meals, but everything is very quick and easy and family friendly. So if you wanna see what those are, then stay tuned. First up, we have ranch chicken tenders. So I've just got some chicken tenders. I'm gonna go ahead and melt my butter in the microwave. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take that out with my oven mitt here because I did not use a microwave safe bowl, my bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some Parmesan cheese into my bowl here to mix it all together. You're gonna need about a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese and then you're gonna need about three fourth cups of panko breadcrumbs. So I'm pouring that into the bowl as well as a package of ranch seasoning. And it did say two tablespoons, but I think I went ahead and just dumped the whole package in there. And that's what I would recommend doing for sure. So you're just gonna take your chicken tenders and dip them in the butter, and then you're gonna dip them into your dry mixture. Now you can do it the way that I'm showing you here, or you can actually do it an easier way and just put it in that bowl if you have a matching lid to it, which I did. And I found this out later after I'd done this a couple, like I think I did one batch and then I went back and was like, oh, there's got to be a better way. I went ahead and just put the lid on and put them in there and then just shook them around. Like remember shake and bake kind of like that. So you could either do it this way or you could put the lid on, put them in there and just shake them all up. And that was much quicker and much easier. <laughs> So you just want to get them all mixed up and breaded really well. Then you're going to spray your air fryer with some nonstick spray, put everything in there, and then you're going to spray the top of them with a nonstick spray as well. I forgot to do that, but then I came back and did it. And then you're going to set your air fryer for, let's see here, 11 minutes, 10 minutes, 390. <laughs> I'm watching. Okay. Yeah. 10 minutes, 390 for 10 minutes. And I did forget to show you guys, but I did spray the top of those. And then I'm going to make these green beans and they're the glory seasoned ones. They are so good. I highly recommend it. And a lunch, a bunch of you have a bunch of you. It's late. A bunch of you have told me that they make really good vegetables, like other varieties. So I'm definitely going to be trying them, but the green beans are so good. They remind me of Texas roadhouse green beans. They are just really, really good. And I'll never go back to just the regular canned green beans. These are just amazing. So you are going to flip these about halfway through that 10 minutes. So at about five minutes, you do want to flip them. I didn't show that. I'm just taking one out to make sure that it was cooked and it was perfect. It was not too dry, but you know how chicken is. You don't want it to be like rubbery and chewy. You want it to be like it has to be perfect, right? And these were, they were so good. This was so quick and easy. I just made a side of box mac and cheese and those green beans and dinner was ready. Next up is loaded potato soup. I believe I saw a reel for this, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get you the exact re recipe here, but I just took a bag of diced hash browns. I'm doing salt, pepper, and then I'm going to go ahead and do two packages of ranch seasoning in there. And this is, this one so, so good. Like seriously amazing. This is definitely a dump and go. You could put this in in the morning, come home after a long day of work or whatever you've got going on and it'll be ready. You're gonna add in a bag of sharp cheddar cheese and a block of cream cheese. And I was seriously struggling to get this cream of chicken out. It took forever, but I finally got it. So you're gonna do two cans of cream of chicken. And then I got a large bag of bacon bits, like the bigger bag. And I always do real, not imitation. So you're going to put a bag of bacon bits in there. And then I also chopped up some green onion. You don't have to do that, but I love green onion. I didn't feel like it really had a lot of flavor in the recipe, but I still did it because I love green onion. So I did green onion in mine as well. And I also added an entire container of chicken broth, one of these big ones, not the um, little canned ones. You're going to want to do a whole container of chicken broth in there. And then you're just going to set this on low for like eight hours, come in and stir it maybe once in that time, but you don't even have to really. And it is so 
delicious. You could serve this with sandwiches. That would be really good or grilled cheese or just some sort of bread. That would also be good. But this one is such an easy, delicious comfort food. Okay, I kind of made this one up. It's chicken and green beans. I just thought it would be good. I don't really have like an actual recipe to link for you, but I'm just spraying my crock pot with some nonstick spray. I'm gonna add in my chicken breast. I'm actually doing the diced ones. I love these. You guys have seen me use these lots of times. I get them at Food Lion, but I'm sure you can find them in plenty of stores, but they're already diced up, which makes it really easy. I like the bite size. And I'm just going in and seasoning it with the seasonings that I'm showing you here. But of course, go ahead and season it with whatever your favorite seasonings are it does not matter just use what you and your family love and then I went ahead and peeled some potatoes up and rinsed them and I'm adding those in there and then I'm also going to dump in a can of those glory seasoned green beans and I'm also adding in a package of ranch. Now, when you add in the green beans, definitely pour all the juice in there. Do not drain that out. You're going to want that because that's got all of that yummy flavor. So good. So I put this on low for eight hours. This would be done in four hours probably if you wanted to cook it on high for four hours. But I just did low because I was putting it in in the morning so I could kind of set it and forget it kind of thing. But this was so delicious. You could also serve this with like butter bread or rolls. Okay, so this is Marry Me Chicken. I'm just adding some olive oil to my pan here and I'm going to go ahead and sear my chicken breast. You wanna have this really hot when you put them in serum. If you did this on a cast iron skillet, it would be even better, but my husband won't let me use his cast iron skillet. So you might see it in the background of a lot of these clips, but I'm not allowed to touch it. So I just went ahead and used my regular pan. Now I am doing this in a separate mixing bowl, but once I was done, I realized I really could have just done this in the crock pot. It would have saved me a little bit of dishes, but I'm adding in a can of, um, chicken broth and then I'm adding in some flour. Let's see how much flour am I adding? Three tablespoons of flour. And then I'm doing some salt and pepper in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and season it with some Italian seasoning. I never measure this. And some smoked paprika. I don't even think the recipe called for that, but I love it. So I dumped some of that in there. And then I'm adding in some minced garlic. I think I did about like two or three tablespoons. And then I mixed that all up. But as you can see, it didn't really make sense to do that in a mixing bowl. I should have just done it inside of the crock pot but you can learn from my mistakes so I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in my crock pot and now that my chicken has been seared on both sides I'm going to add that to the crock pot Now I'm putting a little bit of butter on each slice because that's what the recipe told me to do. And then I'm going to add in some sun-dried tomatoes. I just got this brand and I don't mind the flavor of these, but the texture would be a no-go for me. And if you have picky eaters, I know you understand. So you definitely don't have to eat them if you are picky like I am. They're more just for flavor, but you can eat them if you want. But I went ahead and put this on low for eight hours. And when I came back, this is what it was looking like. I am going to add in some heavy whipping cream. You wanna add in one cup. And so I'm pouring that in there. This is about an hour before it was ready to serve. And then I came back and just kind of mixed that all together. And I just served mine on fettuccine with some corn. You could serve yours however you like. Honestly, did not love this one. I didn't feel like it had a lot of flavor, surprisingly. So you could try it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Now we're moving on to this brown sugar chicken. I had pinned the recipe for this and then completely lost it. So I had remembered somewhat what went in it. So I was just kind of winging it. So we're doing some chicken breast. We're doing some salt and pepper. I'm adding some garlic seasoning in here 
and I'm adding in some carrots that I have peeled and rinsed. And then to my mixing bowl, I am going to add a can of chicken broth. And I did think that this would work better in the mixing bowl for this one just because I'm already adding those other ingredients in there. But you could do this first if you want it. It just is really up to you. And then I'm adding in some brown sugar. As you can see, I did not measure. So I really, I think about a fourth a cup and then about two tablespoons of minced garlic. And then again, I did not measure the honey. I'm just pouring it in there. I would say it was probably about two tablespoons and the same with that red wine vinegar. Actually, you know what? That was not red wine vinegar. I think that was balsamic vinegar. Let me hold, hold please. <laughs> Yes, it was. My bad. Sorry about that. I'm terrible at doing these voiceovers. I am not a very good cooking channel. But anyways, I'm just adding that mixture and I'm going to go ahead and cook that on low for about eight hours or high for four, just depending on how much time you have. And then about an hour before it was ready to serve, I went in with about two tablespoons of cornstarch to thicken up the sauce. And you just want to add that cold water to that slowly, mix it up, and then you can add it in there about an hour before you serve just to help thicken it up a little bit. This one was pretty good. I just served it with some Bob Evans mashed potatoes and some mac and cheese and then also some rolls and it makes a great weeknight dinner or a weekend dinner. The whole family loved it and yeah I hope you guys like this video. If you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it and also don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.